Hello all. In my last presentation, I had briefed you on smog. I had given you a brief introduction to smog, how it is formed, what are its effects, how can we control, etc. In this presentation, we shall discuss on the different types of smog. There are basically two types of smog. Number one, the London smog or the classical smog or the sulfurous smog. Number two, the Los Angeles smog or the photochemical smog. Now London smog is also called as classical smog or sulfurous smog. It is also called as reducing smog. Now it is called sulfurous smog because it has got oxides of sulfur more. It is called reducing sh uh, smog because uh, uh, the sulfur dioxide present in it is reducing in nature. It is called London smog because it was first observed in London in 1952. Similarly, the photochemical smog is called so because it, the components of photochemical smog are formed via photochemical reactions. It is called Los Angeles smog because it was first observed or felt in Los Angeles. It is also called as oxidizing smog because the components in it, the oxides of nitrogen and ozone, are oxidizing in nature. Now we shall take up each type of smog individually. Let us first photochemical smog or Los Angeles smog, also called as oxidizing smog. It was first observed in Los Angeles in 1940. Now, photochemical smog or uh, Los Angeles smog occurs in warm, dry and sunny climate. Unlike our uh, classical smog which happens in uh, cold condition, cold weather condition, photochemical smog was uh, uh, observed in, during warm condition, the warm climate. It creates a brown haze above the affected area, similar to your uh, classical uh, smog also. It creates, classical smog creates a grey haze, here it forms a brown haze. It is composed of both primary and secondary pollutants. And uh, the primary pollutants include oxides of nitrogen and volatile organic compounds. These are introduced via vehicular emissions and industrial processes. It is this oxides of nitrogen which gives the brown hazy appearance or brown haze above the affected area. Now the secondary pollutants are produced by the action of sunlight on the primary pollutants like mixture of VOCs and oxides of nitrogen. Now, this, uh, these pollutants are produced due to the combustion of fossil fuel, burning of plant matter and evaporation of VOC from household materials like paint, other uh, uh, perfumes, body sprays, air conditioners, etc. All those volatile organic components result in photochemical smoke. The photochemical smoke has high concentration of oxides of I mean nitrogen dioxide and ozone these are oxidizing in nature that's why we call photochemical smog as oxidizing smog also let us see what are the major components of uh, photochemical smog you have oxides of nitrogen called NOx you can have NO2 NO3 NO nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide nitrogen trioxide etc into 5 all oxides of nitrogen then ozone is another component, it, uh, formaldehyde, acrolein and peroxyacetyl nitrate or PAN. Now ozone is toxic, even PAN is toxic, formaldehyde is also toxic, acrolein, everything is toxic. Now this ozone and PAN has more, is more toxic. So these are the major components of uh, uh, photochemical smog, pan, acrolein, formaldehyde, etc. are the secondary pollutants produced. Even ozone is the secondary pollutant produced. Now, VOCs and aldehydes and ketones, they are also oh, the components of photochemical smog. VOCs are usually the 
primary print. Now, how is photochemical smog formed? The oxides of nitrogen, nitric oxide, which you emit into the atmosphere, reacts with oxygen in the presence of sunlight. This is important. In the presence of sunlight to form nitrogen dioxide. Now, this nitrogen dioxide gets converted to nitric oxide and oxygen free radical or molecule, uh, I mean atomic oxygen. Now, see the nitric oxide is regenerated here. This will again react with oxygen, form the NO2. And NO2 can again react and form, you know, decompose and form NO and O. Now, this molecular oxygen, I mean, sorry, atomic oxygen or oxygen free radical can trigger further reactions. It will react with molecular oxygen to form ozone. Now, this ozone, we have seen that if it is near the yeah, uh, uh, Earth's surface, it, it is toxic. So, this causes a lot of uh, uh, diseases, uh, respiratory diseases, etc. We shall discuss it. Now, this ozone again reacts with the nitric oxide and form NO2 and oxygen. Now, NO2 is again regenerated. Alright, now what will happen? NO2 will again decompose to form NO and O. Oxygen free radical. This oxygen free radical will again combine with molecular oxygen and ozone is formed. So this continues. Alright, so it will, it will be like a chain reaction. It will be going on producing ozone, nitrogen dioxide and uh, this nitrogen dioxide gives us the gives the brown hazy appearance when photochemical smog is observed. Now the uh, molecular, I mean sorry, atomic oxygen or the oxygen free radical can even react with molecule, water molecule to form hydroxyl free radicals, OH free radical. Now this OH free radical is highly reactive. It will react with NO2 to form HNO3, which will result in acid rain. Nitric acid, which will precipitate down as acid rain. So, in uh, classical smog, it was sulfuric acid, which will uh, come down in the, along with in the acid rain. And in photochemical smog, it is the nitric acid. So, the secondary component or secondary pollutant formed during photochemical smog, nitric acid again is going to cause acid rain. So, both photochemical smog and classical smog uh, result in acid rain. Now, the oxides of nit that is nitrogen dioxide and ozone are strong oxidizing agents and they will react with the hydrocarbons which are emitted to produce the secondary pollutant pan formaldehyde, acrolate, etc. So, the primary pollute, uh, I mean NO2 will and ozone will produce pan, it's, uh, formaldehyde, acrolate, etc. They are reacting photochemically. So, one example formation of formaldehyde, uh, the methane gas present in the atmosphere will react with the ozone to form formaldehyde. A formaldehyde is also toxic in now let us see how pan is formed, peroxyacetyl free radical is formed. Now the starting material or the starting pollutant for the formation of pan is the reacting hydrocarbon, which will react with ozone molecule and form alkyl free radical. This alkyl free radical will react with an oxygen molecule and form peroxide free radical. Now you can see here RCH2O2 free radical. This peroxide free radical will react with an nitric oxide to form NO2, nitrogen dioxide, and RCH2O free radical. This uh, nitrogen dioxide is uh, resulting in the brown hazy appearance. Now, this acyl free radical or RCH2O free radical will react with oxygen molecule to form again uh, aldehyde 
and peroxide free radicals. An aldehyde is formed and peroxide free radicals form. Now this peroxide free radical will react with another nitric oxide molecule to produce again nitrogen dioxide, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, nitrogen dioxide and hydroxyl free radical. So nitrogen dioxide is produced at two instances, one here and one here. Now this hydrogen, I mean hydroxyl free radical will react with another molecule of uh, hydrocarbon, releasing what it will release water and produce alkyl free radical. So this cycle continues. This reaction cycle continues. So it starts with the reactive hydrocarbon and uh, then it goes on, moves on. Uh, every, at every step of free radicals produced and this free radical moves on every nerve. This happens in the presence of sunlight. That's important. That's why it's called photochemical smoke. Now, where is pan formed? Pan is, pan is not formed here. Now, pan is formed as a side reaction. You have the aldehyde here. You have the hydroxyl free radical here. This aldehyde and the hydroxyl hydroxyl free radical form will react together to form RCO free radical. Okay, RCO free radical is formed and this uh, RCO free radical will react with oxygen molecule to form peroxy SI free radical. So the aldehyde will react with hydroxyl ion to form a free radical which will react with oxygen to form peroxy a free radical which will react with another molecule of nitrogen dioxide to form a pan or peroxy acetyl free radical. So this is the formation of pan. It's a, it happens it's a side reaction in the photochemical cycle reaction. So this pan is highly toxic, it causes high irritation, etc. So you shall see the effects of uh, photochemical smoke. So this is how pan is formed and this is the main reaction involved in photochemical smoke. Okay, it starts with reactive hydrocarbons and the cycle moves on and that has a side reaction for access to the nutrients. Now what are the effects of Photochemical smog. Photochemical smog, uh, as the classical smog, it causes uh, damage to lungs or uh, uh, respiratory uh, system. The pan causes eye irritation and damages plants. The ozone release irritates eye and degenerates rubber and plants. The oxides of nitrogen causes acid rain. It causes the uh, components of smog causes breathing difficulties and uh, respiratory diseases, the pan, ectoline, uh, formaldehyde, etc. are carcinogenic in nature. It causes health problems to animals too. These uh, secondary pollutants and as well as the primary pollutants are uh, corrosive in nature, causes damage to buildings and vehicles and uh, uh, monuments made up of limestone, etc. cause the this, these produce acid minerals and also this uh, uh, photochemical smog reduce the visibility and uh, the certain accidents. And how can we control photochemical smog? We can control photochemical smog the way, same way as we can, we can control classical smog. The major uh, control method is to reduce pollution. Okay, we use public transport mode that is. Uh, as far as possible, reduce the number of vehicles on board. You can have catalytic converters attached to the uh, vehicular exhaust as well as the industrial exhaust so that nitric oxides are uh, released as nitrogen. So that this nitric oxide will not be available for reaction. And instead of our petroleum products or fossil fuels, go for CNG or even renewable source of energy like sunlight, wind, etc. These are the control methods of photochemical smoke.